Hey everybody and welcome to Plastic Nostalgic, where all toys are nostalgic, eventually. Now I've been uh, taking a break from opening some toys lately, because earlier this month I attended Free Comic Book Day at my local comic book shop and come back with a big pile of comics that I've been enjoying these past couple weeks, reading here and there when I could find the time. So let's take a look at some of the things I found on Free Comic Book Day. While at Soundwave, the kids and I grabbed some free comic books from their wide selection of Free Comic Book Day selections. And this is one my son picked up. I Am Stan, the graphic biography of legendary Stan Lee by Tom Siolvi. Another one is the 65th Smurf Anniversary. This one's a little different size than the other comic books, but it was uh, nostalgic nonetheless. There's another bunch of nostalgic characters. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Having fun with Shredder. And this is the Battle of the Pumpkin King. It's a Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas tale. About Jack Skellington and Oogie Boogie. And here was a fun one. Madballs versus the Garbage Pail Kids. Now this was uh, interesting. Real nostalgic for both the Madballs and the Garbage Pail Kids. Had a little collection of both at one time. So I had to pick this one up. Here is Shadow Man Dark Legacy. This also included a Exo Man of War story from Valiant Comics. Here is one of my favorite characters, Conan the Barbarian. Now that is a character that needs a toy line if there ever was one. This character has gone through many comic book companies and it now is in owned by Titan Comics. And this is issue 00 of 2023. The artwork inside is very nostalgic and reminds me of some of the earlier Conan work by various artists. And now on to Marvel. I picked up the Uncanny Avengers. And here is from DC, the Dawn of DC Night Terror Special Edition. Here is another Marvel free comic book day selection, Spider-Man and Venom. I'm always glad to pick up one of the free comic book day Spider-Man selections because it leads into the things that are going to happen during the summer. Gives you a little heads up on the summer event, whatever that may be. Also, and I picked up a couple of Spider-Man books. Number 71 and number 63 of The Amazing Spider-Man and this great annual The Amazing Spider-Man, part of the Infinite Destinies storyline, Spider-Man annual number two. All of these I got a great deal on for a dollar. Sure beats the cover price and it's a great reason to head into the comic book shop on free comic book day. Another good pile of books I picked up were these trade paperbacks. Now here is The Amazing Spider-Man, a story about American Son, where Norman Osborn wanted his son to be an American patriot. And he gave him an Iron Man costume to wear. This was pretty good. Here is trade paperback of The Red-Headed Stranger. This covers Amazing Spider-Man 602 to 605. And then we have Worldwide. Trade paperback by The Amazing Spider-Man. This covers issues 794 
through 796 and the annual 42. Wow. Spider-Man's been around for quite a while. A couple of essential books I got. Marvel Essential Series. Marvel 2-in-1, starring The Thing from the Fantastic Four. Now, this series was a great series because it teamed up The Thing with uh, various heroes and sometimes villains. But it was always a new character. To, or not a new character, but it always introduced readers to characters that they might not have been familiar with. Here's a great one. King size annual of the Marvel 2 in 1, The Thing and Spider Man, featuring the Avengers. Let's flip through it again here and see what else we see. The Thing and Invisible Girl. Who would have thought they would have ever teamed up? And here's a, a good one. The Thing Alone Against the Mystery Menace. I can't wait to dig into this one. But I've been reading a couple other books right now. Here is another blast from the past. The Marvel Essential Man-Thing. Number two. The man thing was a Ted Salas, and then he got transformed by chemicals into that strange creature we know as the man thing. And ever since, he's been getting into all kinds of shenanigans. And it's had some great storylines and some great artists and writers involved in this. Now, I have a lot of these, or not a lot, but some of these in other collections. But this goes a little further with, like, this Marvel team-up. Here's a Marvel 2-in-1. And this covers the Man-Thing from 1974 series. 15 through 22 and the 1979 series 1 through 11 the giant size man thing 3 through 5 rampaging hulk number 7 marvel team up 68 marvel 2 and 1 43 and doctor strange number 41 man thing very enigmatic character because he can't talk has no uh Real thoughts back then, but he was just like a force of nature. And I got two thing books during the free comic book day. And here is the Marvel Masterworks by Chris, Chris Claremont and John Byrne with John Romita Jr. This is the Dark Phoenix Saga has all of these X-Men books in it from 132 to 140 and Phoenix the Untold Story and Bizarre Adventures number 27. This was a great book that covered a very interesting time in the X-Men history. Had great characters and these Marvel Masterworks put a lot of effort into bringing back the color and making the artwork really stand out at the same time. Now this follows the Dark Phoenix and her uh, travels across the universe and eventually her death and Scott leaving the team as X-Men leader Cyclops. Another great book. I was I zoomed through this one. And here is another essential Marvel Essential series, X-Men number five. Now this covers 
some great books. Uncanny X-Men 180 through 198, the annual, number eight. The X-Men Alpha Flight miniseries, number one and two. And it has great stories in here. Now this, this is the book that when I was a kid, about 10, 11, 12, this is the book that collects all of those issues that we would buy off of the newsstand. And here it is. They were they found the the ark that took them to the mysterious planet of the Secret Wars. And in the next issue, they come back. Imagine that. Young Dragons in Love. I remember seeing that on the newsstand. Thought it was great. But I got a lot of these on the newsstand, and there's my uh, bookmarker. Got a lot of these on the newsstand and still have a majority of these issues as floppies. Oh my goodness, I remember when this one came out. I saw that picture in the comic book and I was like, I couldn't wait to read this one. And although this isn't color, it still brings back all of those memories as if they were in color. And this... X-Men and Alpha Flight was a great little mini-series that had lots of repercussions for both teams involved and the New Mutants eventually. I have to get back to reading this one while I'm taking a little break from my adult duties. Get back to reading that. The best part about these was the great deal that I got on this stack of trade paperbacks. Each were only five dollars a piece. Now, if you don't get down the sound wave, let's put a picture right here. If you don't get down the sound wave, to check out comic books on a regular day, make sure you get down there when they're having free comic book day because you'll find some great specials on some great books and toys and much, much more. Thanks for joining us today on Plastic Nostalgic, even though today it was a little more paper nostalgic. But if you want to see some more, unboxing of some soon-to-be nostalgic toys be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below see y'all next time